You know, we going to pop in with y'all on the ground days. Y'all know we even go to the ground So let's just start the discussion. I mean, it don't really matter. Um. Yeah, like, I just want to ask y'all, when y'all here, um, being specific in your relationships, what do you think of? You know how we always started off with asking the question I want to hear from the panel. What's your views when you hear that that question being raised? So how are specific? Yeah, in your relationships. It, just communication in regards to um, defining our terms, seeing our common goals, uh, seeing where we may need to like complement each other, how we work, how we, how we, how we fit. And basically being specific about our needs, you know, what we want, what we're willing to give. Okay. I think being specific is being intentional and providing everything that you require. Cause there's a lot of times where people ask for a bunch of stuff that they aren't able to provide themselves. So then it like, it causes a very weird imbalance. And now y'all are arguing or, you know, at odds over stuff that doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. Because had you had the conversation in the beginning, you could have avoided all that extra stuff. So just being intentional in everything you do, doing everything with a purpose and, you know, tackling it as is. Okay, you came to party. Okay, Larry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Next person. Mm. Yeah, so it's I think, basic. Oh, go ahead. No, you go ahead. You go ahead. I'm, I'm just thinking because I we have two different words here. So we have transparent and specific. Well, so, specific. But I don't think that they're the same. Okay, yeah, so if we're... Not transparent, just specific. All right. If we're just talking about specific... Specific. Then... I think it, it's what the word says. What am I specifically looking for? So not generalizing, not making it a big thing, but really narrowing it down to kind of what my values are, what your values are. And, and as Jasmine said, seeing if it's a match, seeing if that works. And maybe even being specific in the moment, right? Like this is what I specifically need right now. I need attention. I need hugs. I need kisses. I need space, whatever that is, being willing to have that conversation of what you need in that moment. Okay. I agree with pretty much everything that's been said because I was going to say exactly what uh, Jasmine said, uh, defining terms, making sure that you have all of those conversations that uh, pretty much make sure that both parties are on the same page in regard to needs, wants, um, where we're going, direction, you know, goals, all of that, all of that stuff. Okay. I think it I think it really boils down to, you know, like Christine was saying, being in the moment, kind of like if Aziz and Christine is at dinner together, you know what I'm saying, and he notices the body of another woman, you know what I'm saying, he points it out and lets her know that I'm ignoring <laughs> you because I was looking at her, you know. <laughs> so you got that aspect, but then, you know, all jokes aside, you also got the way. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, all jokes aside, though, um, I believe that it's just, you know, being assertive about, you know, if a, if a thought crosses your mind that potentially could be a problem, that you address the elephant in the room. Instead of trying to sweep stuff under the rug, you know what I'm saying, address it early because when you address problems early, you know what I'm saying, you can resolve it easily before yeah, it becomes awesome. something really big, you know? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think being specific also um, speaks to standing in your truth. When you tell somebody that this is what you want and what you're looking for, not compromising on that because when you start to allow people to i guess compromise your morals or you start settling for things in the end you're not going to be happy because then the conversation is going to come or the argument's going to come that well i said i wanted this but because you didn't show up in this particular area you know i held everything else that you did to a higher standard and i took that l on the thing that i really wanted and you know we have to place that same value on everything like there's no one thing that we need not necessarily want there's no one thing that we need that is of less value than others okay what about you jerry uh, huh what about you what do you think yo why all with the staring at the screen I know. <laughs> yeah. I, you're talking you're talking to me yeah all when is frozen so oh okay i figured you i agree i think it's knowing what you want and and having an intention and, and making sure that you are just not saying it, but making sure that you put that into action. 
we can say we want all types of stuff, but if we're not really living that life, if we don't have that type of, of lifestyle mentality, it's really not going to turn into anything. So we can say, I want a good man, but what does that really mean? Are you, are you in a position to receive a good man? Are you positioned to be with a good man? Are you positioned to support a good man? You know, or people say, you know, I just want to be happy. Like, what does that even mean? It's, it's really, uh, it's a mentality. And if you don't have that, you really can't move forward. So it's one thing to know what you want, but are you doing what you want? Are you living what you want? Like, that's really what it is. I like that point that you just made, Jerry, because um, you're talking about being very specific. Um, I guess this is pretty much the highlight of, of the whole conversation because you're talking. We're talking about being intentional. We're talking about being, um, you know. I like how you highlighted being specific because I was just uh, listening to, you know, somebody. Uh, I think somebody basically preaching and talking about the Bible on YouTube earlier today. And one thing that they highlighted with it was that there's a scripture in uh, Habakkuk that, you know what I'm saying, tells people to write the vision down, make it plain, even if it tarries, it'll come to pass. So, you know what I'm saying? That's definitely a powerful principle is that, like, not only, don't only know what you want, but know exactly what you want. You know what I'm saying? Take the time to write it down and, and, and be very precise with it, you know? So, yeah, when we, when we was discussing this topic, we was really talking about being specific in your relationships. It's all about setting rules and agreements that, really, really allow you to address the inevitable. So like, for example, me and Jerry, let's say me, Jerry, we're all having a discussion, me, Jerry, and Jazz, we always sit down. So when we have arguments, the first thing, the first rule of thumb with being specific to get through those arguments is we don't, we don't, we don't drive through the emotions. Everybody has to make valid points so we can move forward. We also know that we're not dealing with right and wrong, we're dealing with the best practice. So those things are always set in stone. So like, yeah, you can be right, but what's the most right that's going to allow us to move as one unit? Question about because, something you just said. Go ahead. You say you said you don't deal with the emotions, so do you just completely brush past those or like don't acknowledge them at all? No, don't make emotional arguments. Okay. Like you know how your voice, your voice, your voice tone changes. <laughs> you're like, you're talking about how you feel and we're all sitting there having the discussion and I'm like, we're talking about something that can be concrete. So how you feel, nobody, nobody can deal with your feelings. Nobody can address how you're taking it in. I can't address how you're taking it in. You can't address how you're taking it in. We can't really deal with feelings, but what's the point so we can move as one unit? Okay. Feelings are very um, person-centered. You know what I mean? I can't, I, can't discuss, I can't deal with how you're taking something in. I can't change it no matter what because it's based on your belief system the day you're having, the individual you're talking to, what you believe about what I'm saying, how I'm saying it, tone of voice, there's too much to factor in. But when we're now breaking down what's gonna help the group move as one unit, now we're having the, now we're having the discussion and we're all on the same page and where we're trying to go. We have a destination. So that's being specific. That would be an example of what we mean when it's setting the, the, the guidelines and the rules and regulations because the inevitable is things change, things come up. Like one of the other things that we always talk about, and we just had this discussion, me and Jasmine, earlier we had this discussion where we were discussing how, how I move, me, how I focus on things versus how she focuses on things. So I'm like gray is a, black and white is what allows us to actually hold ourselves accountable. You know what I mean? That's what allows us to hold ourselves accountable. So there's so many ways, like she, we can get in a discussion and she's like in her head and philosophizing and, and I'm like, I'm making decisions. So everything is black and white and then we run into gray. And then in that gray, I still have to make black and white to make a decision because decisions have to be made. So that's what leadership is. You're forced Absolutely. to make decisions. So in being specific, you have to have an understanding of how we're all going to move as one unit. Because if everybody's moving in separate directions, you're not on the same path. You get what I'm saying? And decisions need to be made. So we can sit and go back and forth about who believes what. But ultimately, we got to have one narrow focus so we can move as a unit. You get what I'm saying? So what do y'all think about that? I agree 100%. So I just realized I was muted um, yeah, 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 the yeah. last time, the, the whole time I kept trying to jump in and I was like, oh, no wonder they don't hear me. <laughs> <Because> <laughs> I'm muted. Um, 
yeah, no, to, to bring it back in though, um, I know you hate it when I say this, but I do, I, I agree. <laughs> I agree a hundred percent, you know, like with, the with, a, a addressing things in that, you know, in that fashion. So, I mean, it, it's, you know, we have all these conversations, which is great because, you know, we forge thought and we bounce, you know, ideas around and, you know, best practices, but <laughs> Why is it that, you know, let's think about all the times that we disconnect with people, right? So like Aziz and I, we, we argue. Um, we haven't had an argument in a while, but we argue. <laughs> and, and I could say, you know, we can say that we can come to the table and leave all the emotions behind, but I don't always do that, right? Because it's not always, depending on what the argument is. Like there's some days I'm like super, I can see it, it's logical, it makes sense. He makes a point, I'm like, you're right. I'm not in my feelings, we move on. And then there's other times, he brings something, we, we're, 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 we're having a discussion and that sparks something else and then the emotions come and then I have to come back from the emotion, go back to logic and then revisit it and then we get back to where we need to be. So we often disconnect with the people that we're around a lot. So why, if, if everyone understands all that's being said right now, why do we still disconnect? I think I, that, oh, sorry. No, it's I think okay. it's about the, the way that we address the conversation. Um, you can, I think you start off addressing what the problem is so that everybody is in agreement on, okay, this is what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. We're not negating anybody's feelings. Um, you discuss what the problem is, discuss the solution, and then you can come back and be like, well, how does this problem make you feel? Or how does the solution make you feel? Then you can tackle the feelings apart from the problem. Because if you're trying to do both at the same time, it makes things really hectic. Nobody's listening to each other. You're listening to respond rather than to understand what everybody is saying. So if you navigate the situation differently, break it down saying that, hey, we're not going to ignore that everybody feels this certain way, but we need to agree that here's the problem that's making everybody feel indifferent. Address that. What are we going to do to fix it? Everybody bring their ideas to the table this way. Everybody's heard. And then double back and be like okay well i know this is the emotion that you brought to the table in the beginning why does it trigger you like that like why do you feel this emotion what happened to provoke that emotion and then you guys can break those things down i think the main thing is that when people go into arguments it's literally very cut and dry like you going in you're trying to make your point and then you're trying to leave you're not trying to hear whatever what else is going on um, people don't try to spend too much time in arguments. And I tell people all the time, I don't like confrontation. I'll sit down and have a conversation with you and, you know, we can assess the situation, but I'm not going to argue with you because you're not listening to me. It's kind of pointless. It's like basically beating a dead horse. But, you know, if you go into, if you set those boundaries, you say that this is how we're going to navigate our problems going forward, or you find out whatever works for you, you know, things to get resolved a little bit easier, then you won't have so much of a disconnect. It's not saying that y'all got to agree with each other, right. but y'all come to a common understanding that this is what's going on. Here's how we're going to fix it. You can feel how you feel. I might be mad. You might not think that it really matters. That's fine. I'm, you know, I'm allowed to feel however I feel and that's okay. But, you know, how you express that emotion to other people is where, you know, things start to get a little crazy. But it, it gets to this weird, the thing is, is that, you know, if every, if, if, if I these kids it's every feeling I ever had, we would never get anywhere, right? Mm -hmm. Because uh, it, it's, it's unreasonable. And anytime you cater to somebody's feelings to that extent, it, it, it's, it's, it's a one-sided relationship. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when, uh, when arguing gets such a bad rap, right? Because it's not really the arguing, it's the disrespect within the argument, right? So people are more passionate than others mm -hmm. so you seem like a very laid-back person but you seem laid-back right me I'm, I, I go from zero to 100 or I can be on time but like my voice carries I speak fast so my my delivery is different than your delivery right I'm not disrespecting you I'm not I'm, I'm, not, I'm not my intention is not to disrespect you I'm not you know trying to put you down but I may be passionate at the moment I'm speaking fast I'm you know it, it's, it, it, it's, we're having a, a conflict and I'm just dealing with this, I'm, I'm dealing with this slightly differently than you are. But that doesn't mean that I don't respect what you're saying. And that doesn't mean that I'm not hearing what you're saying either. So when you get to this place of 
really worrying about somebody's feelings, you kind of go, like you're on this hamster wheel, you know, like you, you really don't go too far. So I know it's not the easiest to say, you know, screw your feelings. Cause I'm not saying that we, ha I haven't had disagreements with people where there were things that happened within the argument or the disagreement that hurt my feelings. But it's bigger than the hurt my feelings, right? It's it's why do I think you hurt my feelings? What was your intention? And why are we even here? Like why do I why do I even believe? Let's start with why do I even believe that you are trying to hurt my feelings? You know what I mean? Because it starts with a belief. We're arguing because I think that you intentionally try to hurt my feelings. Mm -hmm. So I think if we took a step back and thought about it that way, instead of you know you hurt my feelings, I'm hurt today, and you know I'm not really feeling you because of that. And saying, instead of saying, you know what, like we've been friends for X amount of years or we've been cool for X amount of years. And I don't know, like I, 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 the reason why I'm so upset is because I, you hurt my feelings and I think you did it on purpose. Then and that's, that's a different it, discussion. Yeah, it comes down to trust too and security. Like if I stop feeling secure with you, I'm definitely going to start to have those kinds of feelings. Like if I don't feel like I can trust you to a capacity or you've been moving funny or maybe you haven't, maybe it's just all in my head. Yeah. That you projecting. Mm -hmm. Right. That happens too. So, I mean, you know, there's so many different ways to skin a cat. There's so many different ways to break that down, but I guess you, it's just finding out what works for you. Cause like you said, you might be snappy and I'm not, I'm on both sides of the coin. I can go from zero to a million or sometimes I just be like, yo, like why are you tripping? Like it's not mm -hmm. that deep. But, you know, it really just depends on the situation. And that's when you start to have to, you know, self-regulate and, you mm -hmm. know, pull yourself out of situations sometimes. So, I mean, okay. I agree. One thing I would say, though. Um, I can I, can I, I'm sorry, can I jump in real quick? Oh, we're not um, on Facebook, guys. Everyone, take a minute to share. Go ahead, because you, I, I, I know you were waiting. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, Jerry, I just have, like, a question for you, like, in terms of the disconnect. Right. So um, when communication is poor, yeah, right. Guys, everyone, um, take a minute to share. I'm sorry. That was me. Oh, okay. Like what? <laughs> I was like, how'd she do that? Right. Um, when you have. OK, so like in a group, in a setting like this, I feel like what we're talking about, you know, we're in an ideal. We're around ideal people in an ideal setting. Right. To be able to. Uh, hash out conversations, you know, or disagreements or what have you in a way that we see is fit and healthy, the most healthy way to do it, right? So we're able to break these things down. Um, like I'm asking, like I'm bringing to the table the idea of staying in your power, right? And staying in that space when you are inevitably going to deal with people, you know, on, you know, throughout your life that aren't in this ideal setting that haven't taken the time to break things down the way that we have and you are coming to the table trying to explain like you know everything we're saying i want to have this disagreement if we're going to have it but i want to have it respectfully you know i want to be able to get to an end result so that when we're done with this you know we're both feeling lighter you know but when we are not dealing with people who are in these ideal settings, how are you? How are you staying in a certain space not to disconnect? Do you understand what I mean? Like, there are people right now that I, I've chosen not to really interact with at all because I, I'm presenting these things in terms of conversations just so we could get through stuff. And it's like, you know, I don't want to hear that. You know, I, I want to have this conversation the way I want to have this conversation. I want to say what I want to say feel how I want to feel, but with no end result. So now there's a disconnect that I truly may not want, you know, but it's like, which one do I choose? Do I choose staying in a toxic place with you What's or, that? you know, coming over mm -hmm. here? Well, I would never recommend staying in a toxic relationship. And what I would say is that what, what most people would deem, I, you know what I think is disrespect? When a person shuts down, that's disrespect to me. So when, when we're in a situation where we're not on the same page and you don't want to talk or you don't want to spend ch time trying to figure out what's going on or trying to reconnect so that we can be on the same page, I find that to be disrespectful. So if I'm, if I'm connecting with somebody who is not trying to figure out what the disconnect, even for us to say, hey, we're disconnecting on this, we're not a good match for each other, let's just walk away, then yeah, I'm cutting my losses because I'm not, I'm not in the business of convincing someone to save the relationship we can't save it together we can't build a, you, so you can't build a relationship by yourself 
So if both parties are not invested and want to resolve the issues, want to connect, or even want to come to some type of understanding and say, you know what, this is not working. I realize it's not working. We're not, you know, we're not compatible in that way. We can just part ways, no hard feelings. Then we should be able to do that as well. So I do think that when it becomes, when it gets to this toxic place and they are not in the space to communicate, they don't communicate the way that I do. It's not a principle of theirs to communicate in the way that I do then. Yeah, I cut my losses. Let me be, let me, you know, let me add to that. Let me be more specific. Like when we're, when we're having our, you know, our, our relationship building sessions, we always really build people up and we tell them, stay away from spiritual words. Respect means so many things to so many different people. Don't never say respect in the middle of an argument. Because what you find res- disrespectful, I don't. So that starts a whole nother argument. But isn't that- you're not really truly being specific. But isn't that one of the things that you should be, that's why we said defining terms. Definitely. That's something that should be defined before- Already, that's yeah. It. Definitely. So you cross the line, you cross the line further than the agreement. That's why we said in the beginning, we talked about what is being specific in the relationship. Rules right. and agreements. <laughs> if you don't have no rules or agreements in your relationships, what happens? The chaos. Oh, it's chaotic. <laughs> yeah. Chaos. But if you have agreements and rules and relationships, then now you can always hold somebody accountable because both people signed on a dotted line. If you're with an accountable person. No, you, but you know, well, what I'm just saying point, is, yeah, you the idea is that you are with regardless yeah. because they <laughs> yeah. signed on the dotted line. So yeah. now you have to make different, like a person makes a decision and you have to make a decision based on that person's decision. So the person made a decision not to honor the relationship. So you got to make a different decision. So I always tell people don't have me choose me over the relationship. Right. We should both be choosing us. We shouldn't be choosing. I shouldn't be choosing me and you shouldn't be choosing you. We should be choosing us. Yeah. Right? So in doing that, we have to come to an, a, an agreement. We can't keep on having ind- we can't keep on having independent views within the relationship we're trying to navigate together. Right. So we stay away from like, well, you're you're not respecting me. We stay away from, yo, you're being too emotional right now. You know, like there's certain things we that that that, that distracts the overall goal because it's, it's an attack. It becomes very spiritual as opposed to what did we agree to? Mm-hmm. And you always pull from there. So you want to be like, like what, what Lyric said, very intentional. And then in being mm-hmm. very intentional, you have to have rules and agreements that you can honor throughout a lifetime. And that's building the relationship. How do we debate? How do we have discussion? Like you said, argue. It naturally triggered the Jerry because when we look at arguing, it's like in the courtroom. It's just opposite views. Yeah doesn't mean disrespect. It don't mean it's necessarily heated. That's one of the definitions. But the other definition is, is opposition. It's just we're at, we're, at, we're at two different points. So argument is not a bad thing. Right? It's just mm-hmm. conflict, like you say. And mm-hmm. conflict is excellent. Yeah, yeah. When it, when conflict it, is. When it's time, to, when, it's, when, it, when, it, when it shows that there's a problem, it's just like pain. When you're in pain, it shows there's a problem. Yeah. Yeah, does it hurt? I yeah. But it allows you to identify it as a problem. So it's how you view it mm-hmm. that will determine yeah, not always. how you or respond to it. Go ahead. I think you would. Oh, go ahead. Just one, one quick point. Sometimes pain is the indication of growth. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like when you go to the gym, you know what I'm saying? No pain, no gain. So sometimes pain is a good thing. It's identifying. But it's, but it's still an identifier, though. It's still telling it's you that your body is doing, doing big things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or it's even telling you that maybe you I ain't working out. Well, yeah, or it was also telling you that you may be hurt too. Mm-hmm. How many times that you worked out and you realized like damn, like I've been sore for for a couple of weeks now. This is not just no pain, no gain. I probably pulled something. <laughs> yeah, there's a there, there's a difference in that type of pain though. Yeah, you're absolutely correct though. <laughs> <laughs> conflict only becomes negative when it triggers something negative in you. Like if you grew up in a bunch of what you identified as conflict is your parents arguing back and forth or family members disagreeing. That's what conflict is going to be. You don't really process it any differently. So I feel like 
conflict is only negative when it triggers negative response. But I don't think it's I don't think it's negative when it triggers either. I think the negative part of that it's your response to get triggered. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It becomes a you thing. Yeah, it does. You forgot yeah. the you person. That a lot. like going back to where your parents were, as mm -hmm. opposed to looking at who's in front of you. Yeah. Is this person out to get you? Is this person your ally? We lose track of our allies. Like, I was sitting there, you know, obviously I played sports. So I was talking to Jasmine. Jasmine also plays sports. And we was, I was using the basketball analogy. Like, if I'm the star player and you're trying to be the star player too, we're going to lose a lot of games. Like, you have to know your role. I'm the star player, but I can't take over your role. You got to trust that I'm going to pass you the ball if you're the shooter. If you're the rebounder, you got to trust I'm not going to try to jump over you to grab rebound. It's all a team of trust. And when we have conflict is when we lose track of who we're talking to. We're like, oh, well, I remember when this happened to me, we start looking at us and stop and forget about us. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. And forget about the we. That's when conflict goes, goes wrong because we lose track of who we're talking to. We lose track of what we're trying to build. I was going to say also just to take it back to is when we're talking about emotions like I'm a big emotional person right and um in this case I would be like a really good example of someone who typically depending on home speaking to um will need validation in the argument so it's not about um the progress of the argument but it's about where where, where am I where am I right in this situation I'm gonna be wrong right and to touch on the emotional thing like it seems, it seems like, um, how can I say, everybody makes a deal when we say, you know, emotions don't matter. Emotions don't matter, right? Because it's like, oh, everybody's emotion matters and, and, you know, how we feel is so important. But when you look at an argument or a discussion, and I'm saying this as a, a rational person, I'm in no issue, I'm not, I don't feel I'm being attacked, right? So rationally, I can, I can say, it doesn't matter how you feel. Because I feel one way, the person I'm arguing with feels another way. And at the end of the day, all we have to worry about is the only, the only way we're going to resolve it is best practice, right? So we get stuck on this whole, like, oh, my emotions matter and your emotions matter and how we feel. So feelings don't matter. Really, like, that's something that I can say I'm learning because I'm conscious of it, but I haven't applied it yet. So just, just to put out there in, in, in honesty, but when it comes down to it, emotions don't matter and they shouldn't matter and they shouldn't be taken into consideration because again whose emotion are you going to cater to both people are mm -hmm. told me is both people are feeling emotions so who's who, who's matters i feel like oh, emotions matter they don't matter in in regard to uh where you're trying to go right, right. Trying to yeah, you can't lead with them mm -hmm. yeah exactly you can lead with them but emotions do matter and and, and emotions yes. Um, should definitely be addressed outside of that because now those emotions are, like we said, they're identifiers. So those things come into your space of accountability where there's places in you that you know work needs to be had. You know what I mean? Work needs right. to be had. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, so those are identifiers to figure out why do I feel this way? What right. about this situation makes me want to respond this way and feel this way? And, you know what I mean? I, I think hey, it's I not very you. important, just not important to the bottom line when you're trying to get some. Right. Yeah, like you said a lot. Yeah, I kind of wanted, wanted, wanted to say the same it, thing. It they matter. It's just when, I, when we're talking about conflict and in, 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 a, in a, you know, I was more specifically responding to something that Lyric said. It's like when you're in an argument or when you're trying to get something resolved, those emotions at that moment, they go wayside because the, it's, <coughs> the so of course, 100%, I agree. Yeah, now if I'm feeling some type of way and I realize, oh, shit, I need validation, why the hell do I need validation right now? And now something to do this. So, you know, so, so I agree. For so I want to add to that too. So first of all, I wrote, I, I love this too, you know, how we handle conflict is very personal, <laughs> right? And but there is a reason that we call them conflict management skills because it's not necessarily innate. We don't necessarily know just how to manage conflict ourselves in conflict and other people. And because it's so personal, we might clash incredibly in that way, right? Like, like you can hit all the marks positively when things are going well. And then all of a sudden conflict comes up and the way you do conflict and the way I do conflict don't work together. And that's that skill piece. 
And, you know, I will say for emotions in the context of the conflict, I can see where you guys are going, like, they don't matter, they don't matter, they don't matter. But at some point, we have to understand that our whole lives were chasing feelings. So advertisers are advertising to us the fancy car with the hot woman with the with the glass of liquor. They're trying to sell you a feeling. It's not about the car. It's not about the money. It's about how am I going to feel if I have the car? How am I going to feel if I have the money? And how am I going to feel if I have the hot woman or man? So we're always chasing feelings, whether we like it or not. But I think what you guys are saying is being able to acknowledge I'm having an emotional experience right now. And I recognize that that could get in the way of us moving forward. So either I need 20 minutes to let the chemicals leave my brain because I get flooded. And I think that's what Jerry was talking about that. Like I get flooded and then all of a sudden I can't think. And when we have flooding, we can't think, we can't make decisions. And now it's the battle of who can get louder. So like I need 20 minutes. I'm going to write down what I'm thinking and feeling. I'm going to recognize I'm having an emotional experience. And then I'm going to sit down and solve this conflict with you because I love you because I care about the relationship where it's going I want to make sure that I'm logical. So I need to make sure I'm okay first, right? And I see Mahogany like, okay, Enough. go, go, go. No, no, <laughs> She's laughing no. at me. Yeah, She's right? laughing uh, at me. Okay. Like, I was getting ready <laughs> to try to jump cats. in. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, ready to make my point. No, I was going to ask that you just brought up the, a point that I was going to ask. How long does it take everyone to go through that process of uh, emotion back to, to logic? Mm -hmm. So we that's, can get but, to, the, to the main point. Yeah, but I think that that's the thing. Like, and, and Aziz and I speak about this all the time, like what's happening in real time? Because not everyone's going to wait for you to calm down, figure it out, and so that you can be logical. Like right. people want to connect with logical people in general. Like nobody, it, it's just because you're not all emotional doesn't mean that you're necessarily the tin man, but how many times am I going to blow up or should I be allowed to blow up, need a time out to come back, regroup and have the conversation? You know what I mean? Right. Like it gets old. And I know right. like I've been I've been in that situation where I've had situations with other people and it's like I, you know, they blow up and then it's sorry, I come back, I wasn't thinking, but it, it, it you realize that there's a big disconnect there because they don't have, like you said, the conflict management skills. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it creates this wedge within the relationship. So it's it's you want people to be able to express how they feel without disconnecting, right? And being able to listen and still connect with you. But I know personally, like, I don't like that when that's done to me a thousand times. Aziz is not going to want me to do that to him a thousand times. It gets old. And you think back on it, it's like that's what, you know, children do. Like, you know, like, let's talk about, like, our, you know, our season, like, are, are you the adult in the room? Like, when, you know, the baby's having a, a meltdown, we're like, go in your room, sit down with me so I can come back. You know, come back when you can regroup. When, 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 when my daughter is having a moment and she can't really express herself, like you need some time, go in the room, think about think about it, right? But as we get older, we should we should really perfect those skills and we should be able in real time to take a second back, look at the other person, realize who we're speaking to and be able to react in real time without having I that agree. meltdown and needing the time. And I'm not saying that sometimes you don't need the time, but how often, like it shouldn't be too often because it gets old. Nobody wants to wait for the other person to yeah. catch up all the time. I, I agree with that, but also I want to point out what you're saying. We're, we're really talking brain chemistry here. So there's a reason it works with children. There's a reason it actually works with adults. And so you can try to bypass your brain chemistry all you want, but when you have flooding, which is the cortisol, literally the stress hormone flooding your brain, causing you to go into fight, flight, or freeze, you're going to do one or three. So you're either going to shut down, you're going to run away, or you're going to just totally go. And so for me, I feel like it's better to be able to communicate, like you said, the rules and agreements beforehand. Like you should know how I do conflict. I get really passionate. I'll get really in the moment and I won't leave the argument, but you won't be happy about it because I'll say things I didn't mean. I'll explode all and then I'll have all this apologizing to do. So like for me, it's if I need that 20 minutes and it gets old, then we're probably not going to do conflict well because you would rather get the version of me that can come in and be like, okay, mm -hmm. wow, that was overwhelming. And this is where I'm at now. Or, or like you said too, like not every conflict requires that. Like some things are, Hey, that sucked in the moment. Can you, can you turn that around real quick? And they go, I don't know what you're talking about. And you do a quick back and forth and it's over. But like, I'm, I'm really kind of thinking more of the bigger things, like the things that are really kind of stewing that are stressing you out. The major triggers, like all winter was talking about. 
But sometimes but it's not was, even like the, it's, it's not even the major triggers. It's it's sometimes like like you said, either you stay in the argument, you say things you don't mean, which is a big problem, or yeah. you walk away and take the time that you need, need that that can also be a problem. So right. I, I do think that you have to find that place where it's first of all, you like when you're arguing, that should not be the, the place for you to tell somebody what you really feel about them. That's number one. <laughs> right, right. I agree. So that's that, not even yeah. that's not even a thought of mine. Like I'm not gonna you know, argue with someone and say, you know, by the way, this is what I really feel like. It's wrong. Like, that's I, that's what the throws me. I that's that's throws that's so what wrong. <laughs> but right. I do think that it's, it's when you do, I'm not saying that you don't need the time, but depend, you, it's, it's all about chemistry and who you're really connecting with, what they truly believe in. So you probably could, would connect more with people that believe in time, you know, place, and I need, you know, the space to kind of figure things out. And, you know, I may need somebody who, wants to deal with things a little bit more in real time and be themselves where they're not apologizing to maybe five seconds because they're they needed a time out basically yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. me myself mm -hmm. i can say that uh there's nothing to it for me you know um i'm i'm pretty you know uh leveled for the most part depending upon what the situation is and um I honestly can say that for me, those moments of needing to step away come mostly from those I care for the most because mm. I'm really trying to be very careful and intentional mm -hmm. with how I deal with them. So I need those moments of stepping away because I, I'm, 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 I'm thinking about who this is. I'm thinking about how I address this person i'm not addressing everyone the same because everyone doesn't show up the same but when mm -hmm. you're dealing in feelings you don't think about who showed up how you think about those feelings so naturally for me when it's people that i have a great deal of respect for and that i'm really trying to build with i'm I, you know, those are people i take i take time with me and timmy are are extremely close, right? She'll tell you in a heartbeat, like we, uh, it'll go for sometimes weeks, and but we, we'll have the conversation, but now we have the conversation, there's absolutely no feelings involved. I got complete understanding of why I felt what I felt, um, what I need, like I, I've addressed it on so many levels in my head that now I'm extremely clear. So now this conversation is so much more constructive because of that time that I took, whereas it may not have been, it may have been a, it may have been critical to the relationship had I not taken that time. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I think just piggybacking off of that, um, it comes down to self-government. Like, are you willing to do the work worth the work? Um, saying that I felt like this, so I said X, Y, and Z is just, it's a cop out. Like, did you take the time to be able to still communicate in your feelings like if you're not one of those people who are able to separate your feelings can you still communicate effectively feeling the way that you feel um right. you know it's just a lot of it isn't a based on who you're dealing with a lot of it is just based mm -hmm. on self like what have you done to ensure that you react or that you address things a certain way because saying that oh well i did this because you did that that's not holding yourself accountable for the things that you did Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I, I definitely is uh, on both parts there because um, I think after a while, it just boils down to self governance. You know what I mean? It's, it's like we go through these situations so many times that after a while, you just get to learn yourself all the way and get to train yourself to respond in uh, the healthiest way. So even if whatever, you know, even if in the back of your mind you might want to act a fool, there's already, uh, you know, the things are already in place to make sure that you don't. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Because you're I, being specific within that relationship. So, like, like, when you go back, when you think about it, like, I, you know, I didn't always have the best relationship with my dad, right? And it's because I wasn't really specific with the type of relationship I wanted with him, right? Because you go through these weird things with your parents where they're your parents and you believe that you're supposed to have a relationship with them you're kind of disappointed that you don't and then you're kind of trying to navigate through that space right not really and you're the and you're and you're the kid they're the we're both adults but you're there you're, the, you're i'm the daughter he's the, the 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 father and it was like a weird space and for a long time 
we used to match motions. He will go on 10, I'm on 11. He's on 12, I'm on 13. Like, all, like it was bad. We didn't get anywhere. Our relationship didn't get any better until I took a step back and realized that if we're gonna if we're gonna have a relationship, I want a healthy relationship, and what we're doing is not healthy, right? So I had to kind of narrow down what I really truly wanted, and then I had to understand why is it that if my dad's on ten, I want to go to eleven, right? Like, what was the reason behind all of that? And once I was able to figure that out, I went back to him and said, you know, like this is not working this way, you know. And in order for us to have a healthy relationship, this is what needs to happen. And guess what? He's no, he no longer goes on ten. Um, and, and I've learned not to even, even if, if, even if he gets to five, I'm not going to six, right? Because I'm very specific on the type of relationship I want. He agreed to the relationship that we both established and now we're able to have a healthy relationship. So like you said, feeling, knowing why you feel the way that you feel is important. Reacting to why you feel the way that you feel is not always the best thing to do because you, you, you still disconnect or you're mm -hmm. connecting on negativity because that's what me and my dad used to do. We used to connect the negativity. So it's really important that when you are establishing these relationships with people that you know what you want out of the relationship. Like I had to take a step back and say, what type of relationship do I really truly want with my dad? Do I want him to be just the dad and he's around his granddaughter and that's all I want? Or do I want to create something a little deeper than that where he's he goes from being my dad to more of a, a friend or a peer where we can have a actual relationship that's outside of him just being my dad yes yeah, so, well, awesome. and i'm okay. sitting back and i'm listening to each person have the dialogue one thing that i see is consistent is we losing track of the fact that health is a standard yeah health is not personal health is a standard you can teach health so you can teach healthy yeah. relationships. So if you're sitting back and you're saying, well, this is just how I am, you're not a healthy communicator. At some point, somebody has to call you out and say, you're just not a healthy communicator. You got some growing to do. Because if you are in a, entering a relationship where you promise to actually be mindful of other people, you shouldn't be thinking about yourself while you're having a discussion. That's all, yeah, I agree. Open and listening because yeah. the whole thing about having dialogue is about empathy. Mm -hmm. It's about looking through the other person's eyes. You already know your side of it. To truly understand where the other person's coming from is actually seeing another person. But what I'm hearing is, I have to step away. I have to do this. I have to do that. It's not about I. It's about us. So if you're truly about us, you're going to, in real time, have an understanding because you were specific. And then you did say, I'm going to honor this one way or another. So you fight the urge to go back to being your unhealthy self to show up for the person healthy. Right. That's what the key is. Now, does it happen in real time? Do a lot of people do this? No, but a lot of people are unhealthy. That's mm -hmm. why we're having these dialogues. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people believe it is particular, it is specific. And what's, 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 what's a preference and what's a, a standard is two different things. A standard of excellence. Standard but the standard in a relationship is something that two people in a relationship come up with or the whoever's in the relationship come with. So for me, naturally, I tell people, like, I need time in between. If, if, that, if that's not something that they're okay with, that's not something they'll agree with. We already know from the gate that this ain't gonna work. <laughs> you know what I mean? But the standard is what we came up with. Yeah, the standard is what you come up with. Yeah, sometimes a bet. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say a, a bad approach Um, for what Mahogany's talking about. She's like, yeah, I need help. But I mean, I, you know, I need a minute to step away. That's pretty much what everybody was saying is what I found helpful in more than one occasion is before the person even needs to say I need to step away or even knows that they might need to step away, I address it. You know what I'm saying? Like if I know something was said that makes a person feel a certain way, I might address it because like sometimes people don't even realize like I can remember um, when I was younger, you know, what I'm saying years ago and stuff like that. There will there will be times that I would feel a negative emotion. Like, I don't even know what the emotion is. Like, is this anger? Is this sadness? Is this anxiety? I don't know. All I know is something don't feel right. And I have no clue why. You know, what I'm saying so like there's different levels of emotional intelligence. You know, what I'm saying like uh, I was uh, I was recording the uh, a reference track, you know, what I'm saying just uh, what Sunday. You know what I'm saying? I had my, I had my, and then he comes into the room as I'm like recording 
and he just started freestyling, you know what I'm saying, just some random balls or whatever. And I'm, and in, in my mind, I'm like, yo, I'm actually trying to work here right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, go somewhere. But then I thought about it, and I'm like, I don't want to crush his spirit. You know what I'm saying? So, yo, come back and freestyle. You know what I'm saying? Like, he didn't, like, it was real subtle. Like, if you, if, if I paid attention to his body language, he probably didn't even realize that it, that it bothered him. You know what I'm saying? But I noticed there was an extra pep in his step when I called him back. You know what I'm saying? So, like, sometimes having that emotional intelligence, like, in the big scheme of things, the emotions don't really matter. You know what I'm saying? But, but for the health of the relationship overall, you know what I'm saying, it's good to identify when that emotional aspect needs to be addressed. Because sometimes it really just needs to be addressed for, like, two seconds, and then you can get back to the logic, you know? Sure, I agree with that. Um, oh, okay. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Go ahead. I was just gonna say, so just to tie in what you were saying, drastic, and to as you were saying, and just the overall idea of what I'm, of of what we're talking about as far as emotions and standards. That's 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 my view on it. It's kind of like, yeah, you pay attention, you become emotion more emotionally intelligent, and then you're able to now every time you're dealing with something, if you're being aware and mindful, you try to you try to reach for that standard of you know what. In this situation, we're trying to find a solution. So let me taper let me taper down how I feel. And let me pay attention to who I'm talking to and what we're talking about and what the goal is. Because I think I think even like if I'm somebody like long time ago, let's say, I, I'm going crazy, I'm arguing with whoever. And as time goes and you become more emotionally intelligent, right? Your standards start to change. So now I'm now I'm more person specific, right? So when now you're more person specific, that can go higher and that can increase and that can improve. So as least to your point is like, I understand what you're saying because it's like, although let's say mahogany, like you need a few minutes or whatever time, I'm sure, at least from, from what I know, whatever, you, you're a better communicator now than you were then. Absolutely. Except- Concept is lovely. Yeah, so some things- Some like, things I could talk about right now. You yeah, know what so I mean? like, at least the standard is, I, we should get to a point where we know who we're talking to, we trust who we're talking to, and we're able to put our emotions aside because they don't matter, we're going to get to a point, right? So that's the standard, right? So there's always like these levels that we can climb up to. So right now you might need 10 minutes, whatever, but tomorrow or next month, you might not need it. And, we can, and that's like the healthiest level that we could reach to. Now, I mean, like, that's, that's what I'm Let's just go a step further. The fact that, and I like that you pointed that out, Jazz, because you see how she said, Mahogany, mahogany at fourteen is different than mahogany at eighteen. Absolutely, it's different. It's different than mahogany at twenty-five. So that just shows you wasn't a healthy communicator when you need to step away. That's what I'm saying. The older you got, the le the more tolerance you had, the more you was able to communicate and process, which shows that the standard was there whether you liked it or not. You knew that you had to aspire to a standard beyond anything else because we all know when somebody's greater at something than we are mm -hmm. we can view it so that's what i'm saying the standard is set before we enter the earth you get what i'm saying they're all in place of what healthy living is now do things change do things adjust yes they do over time we have to learn new things but at the end of the day if everybody in this in this chat is worried about and being empathetic and looking at where the other person is coming from how do you get to that high, that high place where you have to? Stay? Well, this is I have a question, right? Well, answer, because I want you to I'm from first. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's oh, go ahead. It's yeah, it's in it's in you know with what you're speaking on because I have it's 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 really like I feel like for myself, right? I feel like I had a a high standard of communication from from small right from young i just kind of understood certain things from young and i know that um over time i've allowed myself to be conditioned to become a person that needs time you know in my ideal situations i would i would um much rather take care of things in the moment right you know and just deal with it um but I don't know the whole psychology behind it. If it's because certain things went a certain way in my household in terms of expression of self, you know, and then we get out in the world and we, you know, wind up uh, having the same type of scenarios out in the real world and stuff like that. Um, it's okay. I think I've read it off. Can, um, 
I I had a whole I had a whole gel <laughs> gel thought when I started talking and then I lost it. What was your question again, Aziz? Well, I'm sorry. That's why you should answer the question first. Yeah, yeah. That was, <laughs> sorry. Basically, basically, what I was saying was, we all come together to discuss, you know, being healthy in relationships, right? So to come to a platform where you're like, okay, let me discuss about, let me have discussions about being healthy in relationships. You have to understand that there's a healthier way to be when you're not being healthy, right? Mm -hmm. so like, mm -hmm. I always, we, 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 we talk about like being in a ring and being a fighter, right? Let's use that as one example. You get punched in the face. You respond to getting punched in the face. Wildly, you're getting knocked out. Okay. I can say, well, that's just my approach. I like to wild out after I get punched in the face. <laughs> I'll get knocked out every time. That's what you do. They make it specific. Yeah. That was good. That was it's good. A that it's a discipline. It's a discipline. And that's what I'm trying to say. We always, when we're not trying to aspire to do more, we always say it's me. But when you see somebody else doing it, when you see people being toxic in their relationships, you know that there's a standard, even though you're talking to two people that's in a different relationship. You're like, no, this y'all can do better. And you know it. Why do you know it? Because you know health. Yeah. So you know what they're doing is unhealthy. Right. It's like you know when you're in a ring and you're getting hit, you can't be emotional. You have to pay attention to what your training is, what your discipline, the things you practice for, being proactive. Mm -hmm. And then you got to respond accordingly so you actually can get through the fight without getting harmed. Right? So it's the same with a relationship. We're not in we're not in there to harm each other. So if you lose track of the goal, the goal is not to harm each other, it's to empower each other. So if your goal from the beginning is to have the conflict to actually empower each other and walk in walk in on one accord, that's the goal. Any everything else doesn't matter. That's allow not allowing us to achieve that goal. And that's so what so when you make it about you, it, it changes the whole discussion because let's say like what Jerry was saying, if I'm saying it's about my emotions all the time, who's governing the whole relationship? Right. The person that's the more, more emotional. But really the logical person should be governing the relationship because the emotional person has to aspire to be more logical so they can move as one unit. You have to know what your strengths and weaknesses are. That's Absolutely. the first thing about being specific in a relationship. Understand I'm weak. So when you're coming from a place of weakness, understand people are going to disregard you because it's their strength. Right. And they're going to say, listen, follow my lead. This is what we agreed to. We agreed to honor each other's strengths. Because if we're agreeing to honor each other's weaknesses, which acceptance and all this thing, that's all, all these ideals that's being preached, it's always going through people's weaknesses. But our leaders are the people who lead with their strengths. And we're all leaders in different aspects and facets of our relationships based on our strengths, based on our skill sets. And that's when we feel, that's when the feelings come in, like we feel like we're not validated when we really don't deal with our strengths, when somebody disregards our strengths. And that's what we need to understand, yeah. that's health. That's when you need to start protecting yourself and getting a clear understanding. What you deem strong about yourself, when somebody's coming at that and attacking that, that's when you're, you're, you're feeling some type of way. And that's when you have the right to feel what you're feeling because mm -hmm. they're attacking your strength. But when somebody's coming at something you know you're weak at, sometimes you got to take a deep breath and take a step back and say, I am weak in that, uh, in that department and I do need to be quiet and listen to what's being said so I can learn to strengthen. Yeah, I completely agree with you that the person that's getting their weakness attacked should have that approach. However, I also believe the person doing the attacking of the weakness should have a better approach. Like overall, you're saying that logic should override emotion. I completely agree with that. Mm -hmm. I don't think it should override it 100% though. Like it should be like a 95 to 5% ratio or something like that. You know what I mean? Like if we're in the middle of a war, you know what I'm saying? And, and I get my leg shot off, and I'm, and I'm just laying there crying like, oh, my leg hurts. I, I, I can't go on. You know what I'm saying? And you're being logical. Like, yo, do you want to survive? I understand your leg hurts. Hop up on your good foot. Let's get out of here. 
You know what I'm saying? That the logic, like real life to me. <laughs> it, like, like, yo, the logic took the time to to acknowledge that that leg hurts, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, but hop up on your good foot. We got to get out of here. Mm-hmm. See, but that's what that's what logic logic always take. Logic always acknowledges what's logical. You right. cannot yeah. hop up on a bad foot if it's bad. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's logic. But what I'm saying is, we 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 and, and you 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 identify what we always try to address. <laughs> The fact that people talk about the 5%. We're talking about best practice. We all come into understanding knowing nobody's perfect. Do we not understand that? Absolutely. So we right. talk about better practice, which is strong and don't mean you, you're you perfect. And it just means that you're at a higher percentage than the other person. That's all it means. So you're like, yo, so what if this happens? That's what I'm saying. Gray always should be turned to black and white. It should be an agreement. So when we enter a gray moment, we still going through that gray process to find something that we can actually hold on to that's black and white because we, we don't want to cross that same path over and over again. We want to have an agreement for when we encounter that three or four times. That's why I said it's rules and agreements for the inevitable. We're going to actually argue. That's going to happen. Conflict, that's going to happen. We're in a relationship. That's going to happen. I'm going to think uh, I'm going to be attracted to other people. That's in a relationship. That's going to happen. What's in place for us to communicate that? What's in place for us to get past that? What's in place for us to persevere where we uh, uh, remain one unit and we remain allies? That's what we're preparing for. But that takes being proactive. That takes being specific. That takes having knowledge on how relationships transpire ahead of time, not in real time, but ahead of time, so in real time, you already practice. You're already in the ring, and the muscles are already taking shape. The game plan is in place. That's why we talk about proactive love versus reactive love. But also, too, to well, add to that is also knowing who you're dealing with. Taking the, taking the time to, to evaluate who, who are the people in your lives, what they mean to you, what you believe about them, because that determines how you argue with them. That determines how you react to them. So it's it's taking the time to, to 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 know that as well. Like I took a step back. I knew my relationship with my dad was toxic. I had to take a step back to realize, like, hey, you know, we can continue on this toxic road, or take a step back. And if he truly wants a healthy relationship, we we could build that together. But it's it it took me acknowledging that w- what my belief was about him and where I wanted to go. It's every time I argue with Aziz, like I can't say that I think he's this amazing guy who I trust with my life, but then I'm giving him the side eye when he's in the kitchen cooking for me. You know what I mean? Because he's not preparing the food that I, you know, that the way that I like it to be cooked. So I can't say that, I, I can't say in one hand that I trust him and then the other hand I don't. So it's really like taking a step back and, and, and understanding why you, you may have, what your, your, why your reactions are the way that they are and what your true beliefs are about the people that you're dealing with and being honest about it and having that conversation with each other. Like, if I think that you're an aloof person, then I should be able to say that, like, we should have a conversation about it. It shouldn't come out in an argument. It should, so every time, like, you're like, oh, you, you know, if I'm asking for directions and you're like, oh, you go left to your right, I'm like, are you sure? You're like, what, you don't believe me? I can say, I can say, no, I don't believe you because you're kind of aloof, you know what I mean? But that shouldn't be the first time that that person has heard, has heard it. So it should be like, we should be comfortable having those conversations with the people that we're, we are building with because that would also lessen the conflict going forward because you already know, like, I already know how you, like, what your thoughts are on me. I already know what your belief is on me. So yeah, there's certain, there's certain areas that I'm not, like, as you said, the, where you're strong and where you're weak, like those things should be acknowledged. Those things should be talked about. And that way you can be specific within those relationships. And when you guys are arguing, it won't go all the way left because you guys, it, it, because you already discussed the things that you guys should have discussed. Can I ask? Because to, to me, it just okay with how you're speaking, oh, right? Oh, like oh, I, oh, winter. Sorry, you're, you're it, back. It, uh, <laughs> I didn't go anywhere. Um, idealistically, again, like sitting with you guys, like it all, it all feels great. Like I said, because I feel like with you guys it will go smoothly like the ideas the the healthy ideas will go smoothly but if i'm hearing and tell me if i'm not hearing um the both of you correctly right but because we know most people are not healthy when it comes to how they approach a lot of uh things with relationship are we 
are we taking on a place where we're, we're coming in or even if we're reconstructing a relationship, you know, and coming back to the table to say, hey, I'm here to say that I like to handle things differently, you know, going forward. We're under the assumption that these people are going to be, because uh, like the responses you're giving back is like this magical person to me that's like yes i want i want to do it the way you want to do it you know i want to do it in this healthy fashion when most people are looking at you like why the fuck all the details you're overthinking this whole uh relationship thing people. you know you know you know what i'm saying you like the, the conversations that we know too well when it's like what the fuck are you talking about i just want to be here in the space with you you know what i mean um so are we teaching these people like are we coming in and if they're not receptive it's like hey mom dad sorry you gotta go or we just we can't and you know involve ourselves with each other because i'm giving you the blueprint and you're acting like you don't understand the healthy in this based on that's based on obviously that's based on the relationship how far the relationship is along in the relationship if you just made the adjustment, let's say, let's say you've been enlightened by this actual discussion right now, and you're going back and you want to share it. Obviously, mm -hmm. you change as a person, but it's going to take the person time to get adjusted to that new communication style. But the first right. thing you have to say is, based on what I learned, and I just, I just had this discussion. It was enlightening. This is what the situation is. I'm having this mm -hmm. discussion. I don't want to be in toxic relationships no more. So this is where I'm, I'm working toward. Are you tired of being in toxic relationship? Person says, mm -hmm. yeah, right? Person saying, okay, I'm tired of being in a toxic relationship. So this is what I learned. Boom, 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 boom. They're like, yeah, I, I can see that. Do you agree to that? This is how we're going to move going forward. Then you're like, yeah, this is how we move going forward. So in the, like in the heat of the battle and the person reneges on that, obviously we're talking about accountable love. So yeah, right. you still have the interaction with them and you hold them accountable. If they keep right. turning the blind to that accountability, you got to make decisions because they making a decision not to be accountable. What do you think in turn you have to make a decision for? You have to be accountable. So there's mm -hmm. consequences to every avenue you turn. When you're, in when you're walking in different directions, there's consequences. We, we try to ignore it, but there are consequences. If a person's not hearing you, you're talking to them, and I refuse to hear you, you're going to have to make a decision, right? You're going right. to stay in a relationship where I'm not listening to you? Right. I made a decision not to listen to you. So in turn, <laughs> you have to make a decision based on what's going to be a healthy relationship. Because we right. all know communication is a, is a key component to a healthy relationship. So when I shut down and I'm not listening to you no more because I'm feeling what I'm feeling, you know that you're in a better place because you're like, listen, we're tr I'm trying to work through this. I can't do this by myself. So get out whatever you're feeling and let's work through this. We're in this together. Well, um, That's what I'm saying. So when they're like, well, I'm not, I don't care. Eventually you gotta make a decision. Right. It's, it's not a coincidence yeah. saying we're in this ideal situation. Accountable love, when they hear the love snobs, they're like, okay, these people have a high standard. So who's gonna sign on to these, these platform, this platform? People that mm -hmm. want to aspire for high standards. We're setting the bar. Right. It's not going to be people who still want to be combative. It's not going to be people who don't want to work as a team. It's not going to be people who still want to do their own thing and march their own beat. It's going to be people who actually want to build meaningful, equal, and healthy relationships because it's in the title. Mm -hmm. So, And I also wanted to add to what you're saying that it's not it's not a guaranteed success you know what i'm saying like like this is not necessarily a blueprint these are tools and techniques that yeah. give you a better chance of having success you know what i'm saying as jerry mentioned earlier her and aziz argue you know what i'm saying from time to time so it's like you know mike tyson said everybody got a plan until they get punched in the face you know what i'm saying so like when when when, when push come to shove you got all these techniques and all these tools it might not necessarily go as smoothly as plans but at least when we're showing up to these discussions, you know what I'm saying? These are training grounds. So that when you have those real conversations, that's what we train for, you know? I want to yeah, say wait, it is a blueprint. I want to say it is a blueprint, but the blueprint is only going to work for those who are working with you to build it. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. You have to believe in it. 
It's, yeah, and you have to, and you have to, and you have to agree to it. So to go back to all winter, in order, like, yeah, out, people outside of this platform, they have, you have to hold, they have to agree to the way that you want to communicate. They have to agree that the best, they have to agree to, to agree with the healthiest way to communicate. If they don't agree to that, then you can't really hold them to anything. So yeah, they're going to walk away. They're going to say, you know, what, I'm not dealing with this. And then you can say, but that's not what I signed up for. When we decided to do this, you said that you would be present. You said that you would work through conflict. You said, you know, you can list all the things that you guys agreed to. So right. that's why, like, th those conversations are important, being specific in the beginning. Like, put it, like saying, like, listen, I, I can't deal with a person that thinks it's okay to walk away. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, the person can say, you know what, you're right, I agree with that too. Then, when, in the midst of the argument, they're walking away. What are you going to do when they're turning their back? You're going to say, that's not, what you, that's not what you said you were going to do. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's not what you, that's not what I signed up for. And then right. that starts another dialogue, right? So it's really about holding the people around you accountable and making sure that it's not just like, I, you know, you carrying the relationship and doing what's best for both you guys, it's you, both of you doing what's best for, 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 for the, the relationship and mm -hmm. being able to hold each other to that regardless of what's happening. Yeah. And one of the biggest things that I've noticed, especially in this day and age and with relationships, even friendships and family-like relationships, Something that I absolutely hate is when people say that what's understood doesn't need to be explained. I think that is absolute BS. Yeah. If you're not explaining it, how do how does anybody understand what's going on? You don't. Even <laughs> using this platform as an example, like there's an explanation for what this is. There's a standard. Like you're showing up to do X, Y, and Z. Definitely. So you're not gonna just come in here and think that you're just gonna sit around and watch everybody. You're not gonna participate. You're not gonna you know take anything from it. It's, it's it's stupid. It's absolutely freaking ridiculous. You communicate. You know that me saying I need a moment may not necessarily mean that I need to walk away. Maybe I just need to, in the heat of the moment, if we're both arguing, one person needs to be like, all right, let's sit down, let's relax, breathe. That's taking a moment too. Uh -huh. So, you know, explaining everything. You, you're never going to understand anything if you don't explain it. Um, saying that feelings don't matter isn't a thing either because if I don't know how you feel about something, I don't know how to handle you going forward. Like, I don't know how to navigate that space with you if I don't know how you react to things. I don't know how you feel about certain things. It's not me catering to how you feel and spending a lot of time on, oh, well, you felt like this, so let me baby you through it. But, okay, I know that this makes you feel X, Y, and Z, so I'm not going to do that thing, or I'm going to find a different way to do what I need to do so that you, you know, you get where I'm coming from. So, you know, everything just basically boils back down to what that communication style is going to be start to finish. Right. How you felt about that, Aziz? What you mean? What she I'm just saying the, the, the part the part about um first of all, I want to give you a round of applause for coming in the second time and knowing <laughs> that you are expected to what participate. <laughs> right? <laughs> now, but um how you felt about the part when she's like um kind of um gauging how to deal with someone due to um acknowledging their emotion isn't no, that I'm see, still, when, I, when, still I was uh, saying, when i'm saying feelings when i'm clearly saying when i'm making that statement it's in context so we're having a discussion working towards the destination mm -hmm. and getting towards the destination you have a feeling and you're expressing how you feel. Is that adding to walking towards your destination? Because when we're talking about feelings, that goes into logical, because that's becoming emotionally intelligent, mm -hmm. being able to express your feelings. So if you're expressing the feeling, why do you have to walk away? No, you're I'm outwardly still... expressing it. So it's working towards our destination. We're still in the same wheelhouse. We're talking about where you're just getting emotional, shutting down, being high strung, not really listening and thinking you're just entitled to that. No, I'm asking you something different. Oh, go ahead. So she said, you know, knowing how to navigate a situation with somebody via their emotion. Uh -huh. And it triggered um, a few conversations for me that all of us have had is in regard to feeling that the feelings um, are controlling the relationship. So I was asking you how you felt about what she said. Is that, would you put that in this, under the same umbrella as controlling the relationship? Because now she's moving 
with this person and according to how they uh, feel okay. in that moment. So I would, I would just ask her, how do you feel? Yeah, like that's what I said. You never know wh whose feelings are taking account. It's two people. Mm -hmm. So whose feelings do you take in account? I, and it also depends on what's being felt. Like you know, you can ask my my thirteen year old daughter in her mind. I don't. She don't have anything, right? She feels like she doesn't get everything <laughs> that she wants, right? But you go into her room and she has every pair of Jordan that ever came out. She has all these things. You know what I mean? But so when you go, when I'm like, how could you feel that you don't get what you want? When I can go in your room and you can have you can wear a different sneaker for two months, right? So that's that's a fact that she gets you know the things that she wants. But yet she, on feeling, she's like, I don't. You know what I mean? Like it gets to this weird place when you go into like feelings because I can feel one way, but you know, the one thing that I did learn from my sis was that, you know, people could say, you know, you make me feel, you make me feel this way, right? Away. And my next question is why? And then how many times have you asked that person, a person that, and they're like, well, I don't know. You I just feel it. What the hell? What do you do with that? What do you do with that? Like, how do you, how do you proceed? How do you move on? You can't, right? Because you need proof that you feel that I'm treating you a certain way or I treat you bad or you feel like I'm this, you feel like I'm that. But if you have nothing to back that up, then how could I really help the situation? How could I improve as a friend, as a lover, as a, as a mother, if you can't really express to me what I'm doing that's wrong? Because it's just a feeling. That's what, and that's what we're saying. We're not saying yeah. forget your feelings. We're saying you have back to it have up. something that backs your feelings up. They can't just be what you feel. Yeah. Right. Join the discussion. Give me concrete stuff. Yeah. Join the discussion. Don't just blame us for something or blame that person for something. That becomes abuse. Because you, you, there's not there's no validity to it. Absolutely. It's just a spiritual mindset that has no validity. And it's two entities coming together as one. So you have to be able to express it. And if you didn't take the time to really understand what you're feeling, how is it valid? It's not even a well thought out understanding yet. So it's a distraction. Is that what brings I'm me saying. to a conversation we, uh, me and Mahogany had earlier where I had got really frustrated. And the reason why I was frustrated is because I was inconvenienced. Now, if I had just said I was frustrated and I can't tell you why I'm frustrated, like, oh, somebody just did something stupid and it made me mad, that makes no sense. I was frustrated because this thing happened that inconvenienced me that caused like a little ripple effect. Like that's breaking down the feeling. Oh, well, I feel sad. Well, why do you feel sad? I don't know why I feel sad. So you, you mean to tell me that you just felt sad? No complete reason at all. Like nothing happened, not even like a pin dropped off the table and that just made you sad. Nothing, like there was nothing there. Like that, that emptiness is just, it's but in, in, in that context, in that context, you're introducing the discussion mm -hmm. as an emotion. So you're starting right, no, a dialogue. Just... So you're like, I feel X, Y, and Z because I was inconvenienced. You're starting a dialogue. In right. the context we was discussing, because we're talking about going towards a destination where both we're already in the exchange, and your feelings take center stage after we're now focused on our destination. So you did, distracted the whole discussion to really talk about your feelings. Mm -hmm. Those are two different things. When you sit down and you're like, listen, I was at work. This is how I felt. Everything is centered around your feelings because that's the topic. So we're going to sit there and have dialogue. But understand when you're talking to a person, you may be wrong. They may look at you and say, yo, you, you felt that way, but that person didn't do anything to you. And they may give you insight. So not because you can change what happened so you can handle it going forward. That's all we do. We try to empower each other by giving each other information so we can handle certain situations going forward. You can't change what happened in the past, mm -hmm. but you can change what happens in the future. And if you're not trying to understand what's going on, if you're talking to another human being, because one of our biggest pet peeves is the whole venting movement. You can vent to a wall. You vent to a human being, they have ideas, they have thoughts. <laughs> There's no way they don't have a, a response. So just understand that venting don't exist. You're talking to a human being with ideas. So when you're having the discussion, make sure you go to a person that you feel is valid in their, in their advice or in their feedback. Other than that, you're just talking to a random person. You're going to get their response. 
And people are there to empower you. So when you're like, yo, I'm going, I'm going to, I just want to deal with, it's, it's a feeling of motion. It's just about feeling. We get too bogged down in the fact that we can control and navigate everything based on how we feel in a moment. When it's a long-term process. It's not forget your feelings. It's, it's not the time to talk about your feelings when we're talking about something that deals with something that can be talked about, talked about in a logical sense. We're making an agreement. Right. So it's a big difference. So yeah, there's so many different facets of a relationship. But when we're talking about context, that's what we're talking about. When we're talking about the actual emotion, like what Jerry said, you should be able to explain it though. Don't close me out. If you're going to talk to me about an emotion, be clear on what you're talking about. Be specific. So we can engage. We can have the dialogue. Because when you're like, I'm just feeling the way, and you walk off, <laughs> you shut me out. So while your feelings tip, like what Mahogany says, she's walking away, I need time, I feel shut out. Relationship's over. Because her feelings supersede my feelings. That's what we need to understand. What's the healthier way to do it? There's... There's dialogue that we, we, it's something that needs to be finished. It's unfinished. So the point is in that motion and in, in, in that time, we have to regroup, figure out who we are talking to, see what we're fighting for and stay in and stay in the fight. Just because we've been punched in the face a few times don't mean we run. I got a question for you about your philosophy with this though, because, <laughs> um, there's a difference with, with communication style. Some people, you know what I'm saying, can, can respond and, and, and talk it through in the moment. Some people got to process stuff, you know what I mean, in order to be able to properly address what's being, what's being like, for example, I was, dealing, I was trying to help my cousin uh, deal with something on her phone uh, yesterday. She accidentally turned on the, uh, the voice assistant thing where you can't actually, you can't actually navigate on the screen except, Either way, long story long, I was trying to help her with something for the phone. So I'm trying to help her over the phone on her landline, you know what I mean? And I couldn't figure it out because I'm like, oh, we're talking and I'm trying to figure it out at the same time. I'm like, let me call you back. I'll figure this out and get back to you. I was able to figure it out immediately when, once I did that because I was able to alleviate the distractions of us trying to talk and me trying to figure out at the same time. Like if I could, if I could isolate that and actually just figure it out, now I could figure it out quicker. Do you think that what you just explained was a conflict between two people or was a conflict between a problem? Yeah, both was, was on a, the same side. There was no conflict. Yeah, yeah there was no conflict. It was problem resolution that we was yeah, trying to do, though. That's yeah. what I'm saying. The difference is there's two people's feelings involved. So in real time, you got to figure out who's in it and who's avoiding it. Fight right. and flight. Like, who's in it and who's actually avoiding it? Because I didn't heard, we done, we done been on this for weeks, right? So we done heard two different sides. We done heard, let's say, all winners say, listen, I really want to talk about this. But then, like, say, like, let's say she's talking, like, when she first came, she's like, yeah, I'm sometimes talking to my, my partner, and he's, like, shutting down and, like, disregarding. I'm like, yeah, like, let's talk, right? And then just now she says, sometimes I got to walk away. Yeah, but if you address that appropriately, like, yo, I, I need a minute so I can process this. Can we have this discussion later on? And they so you're not a hundred percent. And they agree to it 100%. We're talking about walking away. If they agree to it, 100%. But if they don't agree to it, it happens is what I'm, I'm saying. I'm not a stormer. <laughs> yeah, I'm not that's what I'm saying. If they don't agree away. to it, then what happens? <laughs> but I know you well enough when you're in that moment, right? You want, you want your request. You want, you want your request acknowledged, right or wrong. I'm saying, I'm saying, no, you can't walk away. Let's deal with it in real time. Then what happens? That's what I'm saying. You can deal with the communication. I'll stay there and deal with it. Deal we have to get a different me. I'm talking about when we're in conflict and we have to now decide what's better. For us. We're not talking about when we are in agreement. Like if she comes to me and said, listen, I need to walk away. I really need to think about this. And I'm like, okay, we agree. There's no problem with having the agreement. The problem is when I don't agree and you, and you decide to do what you're going to do anyway. That's the difference. So what would be the better practice in that situation? So that's what we would have to understand. Because nothing we're talking about deals with the fact that two people have come to agreement in the way that they're going to handle something in the moment. We're talking about two people on opposite sides. 
talk about how they're going to handle something in the moment. This, I, I, I agree with you 100%, right? I agree with you 100% that um, you should grow to a space where um, you're able to communicate regardless of the circumstances. You um, know how to show up for you in that space at any point, no matter what the situation is. Mm -hmm. um, but I also um understand that like i said before like when you know when you know you mm -hmm. you know your strengths and weaknesses when your partner knows you they know your strengths and weaknesses and if i'm saying that this area is a weakness for me in this moment um i'm 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 identifying the fact that i'm not going to show up at my best in this in this scenario if i don't take that time um don't you think that that is the best way to handle it if I'm, if if that's the conversation? If you're acknowledging it, you're saying this is my I'm I'm weak right now. This is the X Y and Z. You're acknowledging it, and what do they say in return? I'm strong in this area. Follow my lead. Just listen to what I have to say. Right. Take a step back. Present. Be present. Take a step back while we're having the discussion, and just listen to what I'm saying, because it's working towards the same goal. That's the bottom line. You have talking, to be, I'm yeah. talking. Yeah. I'm processing. I'm explaining to you what's going on. So it, it should give you time to take a step back and really see what's going on. But if you're already up here, yeah, you're already from a place of, of weakness because you already allowed yourself to go here with your ally. Like we got to ask ourselves, why are we defending ourselves so harsh to our allies? The people we believe is in our best interest. We just don't agree at the moment. But we still believe the belief shouldn't change. This person wants to resolve this like I want to resolve it. We just don't agree on how we going about resolving. It. So we got to find something that we could agree on. And that's going to take work. You know what I mean? Because I, I can go back to like how you said, you know, the people I do care about. And that's where me and Jerry, like I can, veins could be coming out because we're closer. So the closer you are, the more heightened you can get, the more passionate. The more comfortable you are. Them. You know what I mean? If we are, if we have been, let's say I'm with somebody and they're my partner, we've been sexual, sometimes that clouds our judgment as well, right? We can get heightened. But the point is, if you really, you, you really go back and forth and go hard with people you care about. So because you care about them, you make sure you check, you check yourself and show up for them. Right, right. You could walk away from somebody you care less about you don't care about the relationship when i say walk away i never mean just dart away during the conversation yeah yeah i, I know what you're saying, you're, saying show, period. you're gonna always um, tell them what's yeah going on. i don't I mean like yo i need time yeah, <laughs> you know, I, that whole thing. That. I don't mean dart away um yeah. but that's like i'm I, i'm like that even in um like i was telling uh all went to this our last shoot i am not someone who is great on a dime. Like, you know how some people got quick comebacks? Mm -hmm. You ask them a question, they on it. I'm not that person. It takes thought. Mm -hmm. It takes time. So naturally, when I am put in those spots, that's an uncomfortable position for me because I, I, I lack the ability at this moment to, to give you a concrete response. So that shows up in that space when there's conflict with someone i care deeply for it's like i i'm 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 blank and i don't want to say the wrong thing or do the wrong thing because once it's done it's there Definitely. there's no taking that shit back Definitely. so i'm um I'm, I'm that's what i mean as far as like stepping away and like really like i'm really being mindful of how i'm treating this person because i don't want to do something that even though we can work through it the stain is there, you know what I mean? The stain is there. And, and when you're in a, in a space where you feel weak or you, you, you're trying to kind of um, survive something, which is what you feel when you feel like you're in uh, muddy waters, that you're not really knowing how to navigate, a lot can happen in that space that, that isn't intentional but you can't take that ish back once it's out there. 
So we just gave you a technique. Acknowledge your weakness, like you just mm -hmm. did, and don't talk. Let the other person listen, yeah. take and listen. But y'all don't. You don't feel like that's that's um retreating as well. That's the no, same. as you're listening, you're not, you're not shutting listening, down. You're still present. You're, you're learning. Still involved. You're still processing. You're collecting your thoughts, because you tell me that right. I, me, and you was just in the studio maybe a couple of months ago, and we was freestyling, and you was better than you was better at freestyling than I was. You built your muscle. That's real time. Mm -hmm. So don't tell me you can't do that. You just choosing not to. Oh, thank skills. you. Yes. Because you That's freestyle like say. no tomorrow. You have the skill set. Just being lazy. So you don't have nobody calling you out on it and telling you, stay in it and build your skill set. You're retreating because it's uncomfortable. The first time you went on stage and performed, it's uncomfortable. You came back. You came back. You built your skill set. Why? Because you was mm -hmm. passionate about it. So anytime I know you and you walk away from me, you're not showing up as your best because you're not building your skill set. That's my thing. Build your skill set. My TV on? Yeah, I don't know. Build your, build your skill set. That's the most important piece. So in this dialogue, we're saying in real time, we don't even want to get to that point where we're all in that reaction. While we say be specific and understand what you want, like Lyric said, be intentional. It's like we should be talking about this when it's not heightened. So the moments don't get there. We're proactive. Mm -hmm. So that's what being specific is. Have an understanding like every day we're going to make plans for each other. Plan. Every day we're going to talk about something very uncomfortable. Build the muscles. Invest in your relationship. Stop doing everything. Stop being spontaneous and believing that that's the way a relationship should be. Relationship, when you care about something, you plan it. Relationships is one big plan of life. So you put in the work every day. So yeah, I will call you out, whereas maybe another person would say, I'll give you that space. I'm like, no, I deserve you to build that muscle. I know my worth. I know my value. I know what you're capable of. So that's one thing I'm not letting you up though, because I know your capability. And anybody I'm around, I have a clear understanding of their capability. So for somebody to tell me they're not capable of actually bringing, bringing it down in real time, that's, ang that's having an anger problem. People are, they label those things. Mm -hmm. There's people that go to anger management because they can't bring it down in real time. And people have catered to that their whole life, so they never got better at it. Yep. If you have anger problem, yeah, you're going to always spaz. But guess what? You control every relationship because everybody's worrying about you getting mad. Yeah, I'm not trying to piss you off. That's their whole life. Make yeah. sure you don't piss that person off. Make sure you don't say this because it might piss that person off. Yeah. Mm hmm Every I think to some extent. Know your value. That's know what I was going to say. That's, yeah. right. so gonna say, that's, that's exactly what I was going to say. Um, you know, when I was saying that, you know, like you, you tend to, you know, it, it, feelings are important because you kind of learn how to work with the person, but essentially you start working for the person. You know what I mean? I just got out of a, uh, I just had a break with one of my family members because I'm used to working for her emotions. And nobody has to worry about how she feels. But, like, I always have to worry about how she feels, but she never have to worry about how I feel. She can say what she wants to say, she can shut down, she can do whatever, because she's known as an angry person or the person who's just learning how to control her emotions. So because she's just learning, I should still step aside and try to understand how she feels. So you're always going to be working for somebody if you're always trying to consider how somebody's feeling if it's not going towards a pro like a progressive relationship. And that's why I would say, yeah, emotions are important, but really when it comes down to it, it's important to know to be mindful, to be able to articulate. But when it comes down to dealing with two people and an understanding and like a conflict or whatever, like really it's like, yo, for real, like you have emotions too. We both have emotions. So what's the, what's the better practice? You'll be working for the person, always trying to always trying to alter how you talk to them. Oh, they might get angry. Let me try to alter. Let me try to think about it this way. Are they are they doing the same thing for you? No, they're being who they are. You know what I mean? So it's like Yeah. I was gonna say mahogany, you know. Um, I'm definitely wasn't gonna let you get off that easy with that that so um, those words you were using because we've just come way too far 
for you to say, you know, what you can't do, you know, um, yeah. like, like Aziz said, you know, if it's a, what it's a, huh? yeah, or what oh, would you say, so. Jerry? I said, she said no, what when, she can do. I said what she need, what she feels she needs to do. Right. You, right. You know, being able to come up with things on the fly or say what you, you know, say what you need to say and all of that, like it is a muscle. It really boils back down to the maturity of, you know, your communication, you know, where it's that gap between this is how you communicate now. And all right, you know, that if that's not something you do well now, you need to start zeroing in on, I need to be able to resolve conflict. You know what I'm saying? More in the moment. And each time conflict comes, you know, you just get a little bit uh, better with it, you know, till you're, and you know, until you're at a point where you're just able to just deal with it because it's not really that deep. You're not getting emotional, you know what I mean? Where you need to step away and need to think about what this person means to you, you know what I mean? Like these are all conversations that have already been had, you know, these are decisions. What this person means to you has already been decided, you know? So we, in that moment, I don't need to remind myself because I'm mature enough to know this is what you mean to me. And I absolutely will not, I don't need to walk away because I will not say anything that will jeopardize, you know, our friendship absolutely. relationship. You absolutely. know what I mean? Self accountable. Yeah. Holding right. yourself accountable for not wanting to lose the relationship. Like it's, it's not about, it's not about the fact that it's going through your mind It's the fact that you have the restraint when you care about a person, you have the restraint to actually say to yourself, like, this is not how I truly feel. You know what I mean? So you 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 use your restraint to now actually allow the relationship to progress, allow the discussion to progress. And over time, you get better at it. So you mm -hmm. practice it. And you have to practice it not by saying, okay, I can do this and I can do that. But you have to understand what will be the healthy way to deal with everything. And we should be looking at health every day. Like we're educating right. ourselves about healthy eating. We're educating our kids about being healthy in, in their spirit. But we're, we need to help educate our children on being healthy in relationship. And in doing that, we don't want them to just walk away when they can't really voice their opinion. We want them to be able to voice their opinion real time so we can truly understand what, what they're going through. We can truly understand what's happening with them. And we, with adults, we want the same thing. We want the same process. That starts with being very specific in the way you speak. I think so, yeah, the fact coming. that you express that, in real time, they'll, they'll acknowledge it, but they, you gotta understand there's somebody else on the other side of it that's not, go, that's not going to just accept that as the outcome. Mm -hmm. so we, can't, we can't think just because we express something, we're gonna get it. At that point, somebody's gonna combat, it's gonna be a conflict possibly, and we gotta deal with what's better practice, what's gonna help us get to our destination and narrow our focus. And in narrow right. our focus, we have to be more specific. I think a big part of that is also, um, and we do this a lot in my friend group, I tell them all the time to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Because if you stay comfortable in a certain space, you don't elevate, you don't grow, you don't change, you don't learn how to do things differently. Um, I'm not saying be uncomfortable as in put yourself in positions that truly, you know, dismantle your spirit, but get comfortable doing things that you're not used to doing. If you've never had to communicate you're not going to communicate if you are not okay with being uncomfortable a little bit. Because eventually that uncomfort, you know, you'll, you'll start to find some type of peace in that uncomfort, uncomfort. So then it's not exactly uncomfortable anymore. Um, even having a partner that says, when you, when you acknowledge your weaknesses in a situation, not saying that, hey, just sit there and follow me. Like, okay, well, I acknowledge that you're weak here and I'm strong here. Let me show you how to turn your weakness into a strength. Yeah, not just to say, hey, okay, you weak there, so I'm gonna leave you weak there because I'm gonna take over. Mm -hmm. Because at some point, you're not gonna be, you know, some, anything can happen. That's even just in life. If you got two people who are hard workers and that's a two income household, if one person stops working, that other person has to carry that weight. Like there, there needs to be that balance. I need you to be able to still maintain us if one of us goes down which means you can't remain weak in this place that you've been weak the entire relationship. Or if you tell me that this is a place that you need to grow in the beginning, part of my job and my commitment to you is one, holding you accountable and holding myself accountable for 
being a part of your growth. If I'm not doing anything to help you elevate or to help you be better, I can't tell you that I love you. I can't tell you that I'm committed to this process. I can't tell you that I want this to work because I'm not pouring into it. That's like me telling you that you got to do the shit by yourself. Well, if I got to do it by myself, why not be by myself? What am I with you for? That's like how Jerry said he gets old fast. Like nobody wants to deal with that over and over and over again. You know, at some point the maturity has to kick in because we got things to do. Yeah, but also too, if the weak person is weak, they have to acknowledge that they're weak and they need you for help. So that's another thing too. Like we often, I know that I used to be in situations where I'm helping someone who is not as strong as I'm in that area, but they didn't really truly want the help. So then they become resentful and it became a thing and that was just a divide in itself. So when a person's not as strong, they have to be able to acknowledge that, you know what, my communication is not where I really truly want it to be and you are better at it than I am. So I'm going to take your lead on that. You know what I mean? And acknowledge that so I can hold them to that so that, like you said, when I need you to step up, you're not looking at me like I didn't, you wanted me to be this person. I didn't want to be that person. You know what I mean? Like it gets to this weird place and we've all been there. So it's really important that the weak person acknowledges that they are and they're not in the in the in the in the place that you are at and they need some help because that's the only way that that's going to work because then it just breeds resentment and you guys are not on equal playing fields anymore and there's nothing worse than being in a relationship with a person that is not your equal so that goes back to the Mm -hmm. um, anyway within a relationship because i mean um we should both be, be able to um be transparent in our weaknesses and our strengths. Absolutely. And when you um, when you identify that you have strengths, you should the insecurity of the the weaknesses shouldn't take over because it's not like you're know, just weak across the board. You know what I mean? Um, and when that person is also identifying their strengths and weaknesses, both both parties know we are we we have areas that need work. Um, and that we are able to help each other in these areas and that's what helps the progress of the relationship but there's yeah, levels to we, it right yeah before we there's get lo- off i wanna i wanna i wanna like clear up what jerry said we don't never want you with a weak person no 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 <laughs> we're talking about because you said the weak person so we don't want you with a weak person we're just talking about weak weaknesses and areas within the yeah and i want to um I want to add to what um, Lyric was saying. When we're saying follow the person's lead, when a person says follow their lead, they're acquiring the skill by watching. They shouldn't be asking the person to not be as strong in their area to like always fall back to help them. They're watching, like follow my lead, but watch, be a student. So if you ever have to do it, you're already a student. You have to understand what's going on. So you're following the person's lead by watching. That's when we say follow that person's lead. That's what that means. It don't mean just walk into a wall and close your eyes. It means follow that person's lead and actually be a student of that strength. But that person also has to know how to be a teacher too, because you can lead and not know how to be a teacher. Oh, definitely. You can be a leader. So, you know, being able to kind of balance both. Yeah. I don't know if you can be a a leader without being a, a, a teacher. I don't believe that. Well, leadership, yeah, yeah you, you, absolutely. You teach without even having to teach. That's why you yeah, said you're a leader. You, you, you're a leader. You watch a leader actually lead your learning in the process. Definitely. Right. But, you know, this has been another another great one. It has. It was great a great one. conversation. I enjoyed, I enjoyed this a whole lot because everybody really came passionate, ready to talk. Christine, we lost you for a little while, but, you know, <laughs> I'm glad everybody. Yeah, you know, my internet went out. Well, yeah. There was one thing I wanted to share, though, and yeah. this was this was a quote from a couple that I met last summer that had been married over 30 years, and I always love to ask those couples, because they really are with the ones with, like, the applied practice of the shared vision, right? Mm-hmm. And the wife told me, I said, what's your, what's your secret? And I wrote it down immediately, and she said, we plan on fighting every day, we plan on forgiving every day, and we plan on tomorrow. And I just thought that recaps what we were talking about today and kind of brings it all together. So I thought I'd share what that lovely, beautiful couple yeah, shared with me. Got to be prepared. Yeah, that is cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Plan like, for it. You know, mm-hmm. it's, been, it's been a lovely one. We went a little mm-hmm. older because, you know, we started a little late. So, oh, okay. you know, yeah. we'll see you next Monday. Hopefully everybody all right. decided to come and talk about the next discussion. And 
Let's and Jerry, it. I love your hair. You look so oh, cute. Yeah, it looks cute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, have I'm a good night. Happy with that swell. Hair. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Good night, guys. Bye. Good night, everybody. All right.